Welcome back everyone. It's Tuesday, June 9th, and we're here with our weekly economic updates every week at noon. Thank you everyone for joining us. I, uh, I was getting ready for this and uh, uh, noticed that in many of these videos I'm wearing sweaters and I'm going to watch these at some point in the future and wonder why in the middle of June I'm wearing sweaters. So hopefully we will ditch the sweater soon. As always, I'm Michael LeBlanc, Director and Senior Portfolio Manager at Canaccord Junity Wealth Management, and thank you for joining us. We're going to talk uh, about what's going on in the markets, what's going on with COVID, but before that, uh, as always, we try to make these, uh, these as, in, as informative as possible, but uh, they're not meant to be replaced. But professional advice or your own due diligence, uh, always uh, double check any strategies or information you use to put into your portfolios or financial planning. And we do try to keep the information as update as possible. However, it's constantly changing uh, from day to day to hour to hour. So again, always double check before moving forward with any strategy. And if you see anything in today's webinar or anything general, as always, you can reach out to us. You can reach us at mikeonmoney.com or give us a call, email. Always happy to answer your questions and take a look at your personal situation and how any of this or anything else that you want to explore might affect your overall plan and uh, portfolios. So we are using Zoom uh, for our technology today. Uh, you are all muted and your cameras are off uh, from my end. So uh, feel free to enjoy your coffee, relax. Don't worry about any background noises. But if you do want to ask a question, uh, there is that little Q&A bottom at the bottom of your screen. Just click that and you can type a question and we'll try to get to it today. But if we can't today, we will follow up with you and make sure we answer those questions. If you're watching this on the replay, uh, if you look at down below in the, com the comment section down below, you will find uh, a link where you can email us or again, just go to mikeonmoney.com and we'll bring you to a contact page where you can submit your question or, or get our information and get a hold of us right away. So let's dive right into things today. Uh, there was a lot of economic news last week. Uh, the unemployment uh, trend indexes came out. We're gonna discuss those in, in more detail. Uh, and we are looking for some quarterly financial reports on the, uh, on the industrial and retail sectors this week, uh, which will be uh, insightful to see what's been going on or how, how they've been impacted through the shutdown. Uh, the uh, coronavirus latest, the death tolls are over 110,000 uh, as some of the cities like New York start to reopen in the U.S. Uh, we are seeing some spikes. And in fact, I was reading, I think, yesterday um, the, uh, the, was the largest number of new infected cases uh, globally uh, since, uh, since the corona outbreak. So we are seeing some, sur some surge as things reopen not necessarily um, a second wave in the sense of uh, overwhelming the medical systems, but we are seeing the numbers pick up uh, again a bit. And uh, as we reopen, we'll probably see more of that, especially with the ongoing protests around the world and bringing people closer uh, into closer um, uh, situations where uh, it has opportunity to spread. Uh, California and other states are also seeing some rises uh, in New York, we're going to talk a little bit more about the reopening. Of course, the mayor uh, was booed within City Hall uh, over many, uh, several issues, obviously the handling of the protests there. And China's exports fell. We talked about that last week. We were expecting those numbers. Uh, we were expecting the fall in May, and that's just due to their global exports uh, as countries were not uh, open as early as they were. There, uh, there wasn't as many uh, people buying as supply chains were closed for some industries. So let's take a look at what, uh, what was happening behind all that. So the techs, uh, tech centers, tech stocks, sorry, uh, were the, the best performing uh, as, as it has been for the last couple of months as investors are, uh, are, are putting their money behind technology as being the, uh, the new way of doing business or the new way of the economy uh, with people working at home more, with more online shopping. Uh, there is some concerns that uh, there's been a little overbuying and uh, the numbers might not continue at the current rate as, as some people and as some countries go back to 
uh, normal normal ways of doing business. U.S. banks have attracted a lot of gains as people have been bargain hunting out there. Uh, the U.S. banks have seen uh, some good gains in the last week, uh, although some stress still around their loans losses, uh, as we have not seen the full impacts of um, the different companies that uh, that may um, default on their loans or declare bankruptcies. Uh, of course, they're still backed up by the uh, U.S. government and the Canadian governments. Uh, but if they go into the companies go into bankruptcy, those are those are losses. So we're seeing more and more uh, write downs from the banks in Canada and the U.S. Um, but uh, we have seen some some uh, stock improvement or stock price improvement on in that sector. Uh, we're also seeing some engineering and new industries popping up. We're seeing some ex Apple engineers. Uh, kind of creating a new service, uh, helping U.S. hardware makers troubleshoot from home. Pre-COVID, pre the engineers would generally just jump on the plane and go to the plants, uh, whether they be in China or anywhere else, and iron out any of the manufacturing problems in the assembly line and to ensure quality. But uh, obviously, people cannot do that these days, uh, whether it's the trade tensions with the U.S. or just can't get in and out of the countries. Um, they're having to do it online and it's creating a new industry. So that's a new consultant area that's popping up. And we're probably going to see a lot of new industries. There's certainly um, adjustments or, or, or new ways of doing business for certain industries as we move forward uh, coming out of COVID uh, just to keep people safe and face the new reality of, of how the economy is working these days. Other headlines, we mentioned California seeing some surge in, in cases. Uh, the U.S. declared a national emergency uh, down there. Of course, they've been closed. And as they start to lift those restrictions, we're seeing a slow, slow return to the spread of the virus. Uh, but again, still in manageable numbers. We mentioned the U.S. death tolls has gone over 110. In fact, I think we'll, we'll look, I think we're about 113,000 now. And the world death toll is well over 400,000 uh, as of, that was Friday. I have uh, this morning's numbers here coming up. Uh, New York, of course, Mayor de Blasio is, is facing some backlash on the handling of the protesters as there's continued unrest in that city and many of the cities across the United States and, and the world. We've seen them in London, Germany, and even through Canada. As more and more awareness comes around the the treatment of uh, minorities, uh, specifically the, uh, the Black Lives Matters movement uh, around George Floyd's death. Uh, China's exports fell in May, as we mentioned. Um, not unexpected uh, follow up to April's numbers. Uh, April's numbers, there was an increase. But keep in mind, whenever we see uh, an increase or a sudden surge, uh, that's just a little of a pent up demand. Uh, we're going to see that in a lot of sectors, um, whether, especially the ones that were completely shut down. Uh, some, you know, there are, we're going to see it in the airlines, we're going to see it in travel, uh, where there's certain trips that have to be made, whether it be work or family or uh, just personal reasons, or some people who, who just really want to go travel again. Uh, but once that pent up demand kind of flows through, uh, we're probably going to see a drop off. And that's what we're seeing in China. When they first opened in April, we saw an increase in the exports, uh, which was kind of unexpected, uh, being that they just opened. But that was that pent up demand. And now in May, we're seeing it fall off again. Uh, and that's after that pent up demand has gone through. So we're, gonna, we're going to see that in the coming weeks as things reopen. And of course, the, uh, the love of tech continues. Uh, but there is some some concern around that, as and we're going to dive a little bit into this concern here at the end of today's uh, today's session. <clears throat> Protests uh, continues to fuel uh, shifts to uh, about funding the police. So you've probably seen this in the news: defund the police. Uh, in fact, Minnesota's council, city council, has already agreed to uh, defund the and dismantle the police department there. Uh, now, just to put some clarity behind that, if you haven't watched kind of a full report behind this movement, defunding the police does not mean to get rid of the police. Uh, it's, it's really around the thought process that the police has been, over the years, uh, many, many years, nothing recent, 
um, that more and more uh, more and more tasks are being put on the police force uh, to uh, deal with um, mental illness issues, social issues, um, whether it be in low income areas. And the idea is to take some of the funding uh, to put that behind social programs and social supports in order to, that you don't require the police. So not send in the, uh, a, a completely armed, potentially confrontational situation, especially for, for certain minorities, the police are, you know, don't make them feel safe, don't make it, the situation better all the time. So the movement has been around this positive change is moving some of the fund into other services that can handle a lot of the problems uh, and, and leave in the real problems to the police department. So there's been more and more movement towards that. And of course, uh, Minneapolis being the first uh, in the US to, to make that move. We also saw Trump order to pull uh, almost 25% of the troops out of Germany, which has got NATO allies uh, a little concerned as it may it may underline some of their uh, power and, uh, and efforts against certain adversaries like Russia. And uh, we're gonna dive a little bit more in the commodities later, but OPEC and allies have finally uh, finalized the deal to extend the oil cuts, the oil output cuts um, through to July. Uh, although we'll, we'll see whether that comes through uh, because we've already seen I Iraq and Nigeria um, had agreed to previous cuts uh, and, and they didn't hold up their end of the bargain and now they've agreed to deeper cuts to compensate for that failing uh, but whether or not they they actually follow through with it we'll have to see uh, the fed debates whether or not uh, the low rate pledge will uh, will continue with yield caps uh, and, and this is just the federal reserve uh, trying to protect the the long bond or the long yields uh, whether they should buy up unlimited amount of government securities uh, to shore up those low yields or uh, whether they should have a, a cap on that. Uh, we'll have to see. They're still debating that. And uh, I doubt we're going to see any stability when it comes to the Fed, whether U.S. or the Bank of Canada, um, uh, any stability for the next few months as far as what direction they're going to work, they're going to take things. I think it's going to be a month by month uh, dealing with how the economies and how things are playing out. Uh, the airlines in the U.S. got 25 billion stimulus, uh, but they're still shrinking. Uh, we've talked about the airline industry and their difficulties. Uh, many of them are still not able to keep uh, afloat. Uh, we've seen some bankruptcies already in the sector outside of Canada and the U.S. Very, very likely we're going to see some in North America. Certainly some restructurings. Uh, we've seen it in the past in the airline industry, so they're definitely not out of the woods yet. And um, uh, even with this stimulus, they're still uh, still bleeding quite a bit. Food companies are starting to adjust to their new operating costs and figuring out which ones are going to be long lasting. And of course, they stayed open uh, through as an essential service. They stayed open through the shutdown, but they've had to incur a lot of extra costs, whether it be testing for their employees, safety. Uh, moving workstations, uh, you know, some of the statistics, statistics we're seeing out of the industrial space, so um, the, the warehousing space or manufacturing space or processing space, uh, real estate's numbers are coming out that it used to be 175 square foot per person uh, for operational uh, safety. And that's moved to 275 square feet, square feet per person. So that's, that's going to increase costs, obviously, for space uh, and, and, and even manufacturing uh, potentially new equipment. Uh, so we're really trying to figure out how much of this is going to be uh, one-time costs or just uh, current costs that are going to ease as we go back to the new normal. Uh, or if they're going to be permanent costs and whether that's going to be absorbed by the companies or passed on to the consumers. So are we going to see a bump in prices uh, on food items uh, or is that going to ease over time? So those numbers, as I mentioned, we're, we're expecting some out later this month. U.S. shale companies are turning uh, the tap back on to oil. Uh, now, this is not new projects. This is just turning back on what they had shut, shut down. They're turning a little bit back on. Uh, there's no new drilling taking place. Again, there's really there's been no real rebound uh, in the uh, in the price. We've seen a rebound, but no real rebound in the demand. 
And even if we see a little bit uh, upticks in the, in the demand, there is still a massive amount of surplus uh, around the world. Uh, as we've already talked about, all the countries that are cutting back on their production just to uh, bring the price back up. So <clears throat> if we see that price come back up, we're definitely gonna see more oil into the market, which is going to keep it weak for a while. Uh, Japan is de officially declared first quarter recession. Not a big surprise there, as so, so as many other countries around the world. Uh, as always, we take a look at our charts showing the numbers. The US has shown over uh, 2 million total infected cases, 113,000 deaths. This is out of this morning. Canada, 96,000, 78,000 deaths. Less and less we're looking at this um, as more and more we're seeing countries not really reporting, um, completely reporting. Uh, and of course, it's also affected by actually amount of tests uh, uh, supplied. We're also seeing the, um, the tests for the antibodies uh, being used more and more. And we're actually seeing some numbers in certain populations uh, that have been tested 50, 60% of the population have the antibodies, which means way more people have been effect, uh, affected or infected with the virus uh, and were either asymptomatic or recovered, uh, meaning that the virus is probably way more infectious than, and, uh, than uh, these numbers would indicate. Um, also meaning maybe way less um, threatening to pe a certain part of the population. But of course, it's those most susceptible to the virus that we're trying to protect. So that goes back to the, the mask, why we're doing the mask wearing uh, and continued social distancing. And that's because it, the very likelihood a lot of us are carrying it and not aware or never experienced some symptoms is, is starting to prove more and more. So with that, let's move on to the economy itself. So last week we saw some surge uh, throughout the week in the US uh, until Friday, we saw some pullback ahead of the job report and then another surge afterwards with a much stronger than expected job report in, out of the US. Um, we saw the Europe up against the uh, surge a little bit against the US dollar as the ECB increased their stimulus and of course, as things reopen, the, the money's flowing a little bit out of the US dollar. Uh, gold fluctuated a bit, actually rose a bit on Friday, but then pulled back again, uh, again, as the markets uh, strengthened with the job report. Uh, and, uh, and oil uh, was a little bit lower, uh, but a little bit of surge again afterwards, after the top producers um, agreed on the cuts that we talked about. Coming up in the U.S., the non-farm payroll we saw on Friday, uh, the expectation was an 8 million job loss, and actually it came in at uh, positive 2 million jobs. So there was a lot of rehiring as, uh, as things uh, reopened. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, everyone was rehired. That just means for that one month, uh, the negative trend reversed, which is, is a positive thing to see. Um, but it's going to take a lot longer to, to get through. We were looking at a potential 20% unemployment. It just means we're still sitting around 14, 15% unemployment in the U S uh, so still not great, but improving or certainly an improvement over a continued downward trend. Uh, and the U S reserve is continuing to drop about another uh, 20 billion, uh, in, uh, in consumer credits for April and, uh, another 12 billion the month before. So, you know, continued spending to shore up the economy. Uh, American Airlines stocks uh, soared as they announced that they're going to be reopening more flights in July. Uh, again, this is just dealing with the backed up surge of people uh, who have either be work or personal travel that uh, has to be done. Uh, that pent up demand will likely fall off a bit. And remember, they're not running at full capacity. Uh, most of these airlines are running with uh, middle empty seats or at least one space between every flyer uh, on the flight. So <laughs> the planes are still not flying at uh, near capacity uh, and, uh, or, or near cost efficiency. Uh, GM is actually uh, expanding, taking the opportunity to expand into electric va vans, kind of preempting the, uh, the leader in the electric car uh, market, Tesla. Uh, and they're developing the van for business units like uh, 
<clears throat> the Amazon and uh, UPS uh, as their bigger and bigger demand for the delivery vehicles to be electric. So uh, we'll see what models they come out with. Uh, they'll be the first to market to offer the van. Uh, LVMH uh, is exploring their deal with uh, Tiffany's. Of course, Louis Vuitton had a deal going into uh, the shutdown to purchase Tiffany for $16 billion. Uh, so they're taking a look at that deal. We're seeing this a lot in pre-COVID um, agreements. Uh, Air Canada is revisiting their purchase of Transat Air. Uh, you know, just looking at what they're paying for and whether it's worth that much money and what penalties it is to either renegotiate the deal or leave the deal completely um, to, uh, to determine what's more cost effective. So probably if, you've, if you're looking at any companies that had pre-existing deals going into that, they're definitely going to reanalyze whether that is something they want to, they want to complete or whether the penalties to, uh, to renegotiate um, the terms make more sense. Uh, Facebook is putting uh, labels on anything from uh, Russia or Chinese outlets. Uh, and this is all around, you know, we saw so, some battles with um, Twitter and Snapchat and, uh, of course, some pressure on Facebook. And this is all about the upcoming U.S. election, uh, about the truthfulness and the source of the information. Uh, so we're, we're, we're probably going to see a lot of this when we talk about social media leading into the U.S. election after all the controversy over the last one. eBay raised their forecast after their online boom. Their shares hit record high. And again, that's just one other online retailer that's seeing a surge through the shutdown as people cannot get to stores. Uh, the, the good side of this is we are expecting the online shopping to continue. Uh, in fact, we're probably going to see a very, very different retail uh, chain uh, experience moving forward. A lot of retailers are experiencing, or, or sorry, gonna be experimenting with things called um, storefront. So as, as opposed to inventory uh, in the stores, they're gonna drastically reduce the square footage uh, and just have uh, kind of the show models, the, the, the try on sizes, and then order it for home delivery for you. Uh, so rather than going in and, and buying clothes, you get to go check it out, see how it looks. Uh, try the size in, and then if you decide to purchase it, you can either buy it online or they can buy it uh, right in the store. They can order it and send it to the house. So not all, of course, are going that route, but more and more will very likely have some sort of a variation of that in their business plans moving forward. In Canada, our, uh, our trade plunged in April as autos and oil shipments slumped. Uh, those those April numbers uh, were pretty ev evident. Uh, I think we saw about a 75% drop in auto sales. Uh, and of course, in April, we saw that the May deliveries of oil go into the negative. So just a massive surplus in both those categories. Uh, we're probably going to see that a lot more uh, as we go into uh, the reopening and more data coming out. Uh, of course, things like the retail stores, nothing was being shipped. Uh, and uh, we're going to see our trade being offset by those numbers. The Canadian dollar, which has shown some uh, decent strength in the last uh, few weeks, uh, up over some 74 and a half cents, uh, is likely weakened in the short term unless Canada has a vigorous recovery. Uh, Canada's doing okay on the recovery. Um, you know, oil is a big part of our economy. So as that continues to lag, uh, we're probably gonna see a little bit of weak, weaker dollar here um, it did, you know, as oil rebounded, we did see that strength, but probably not going to hold for, for too much longer. Uh, Canadians are, are getting out there and spending, uh, and again, that pent up demand is being shown on the retail numbers as Canadians are finally getting out. They're kind of, uh, doing some maybe therapy shopping, uh, as they get out and start buying, whether it be retail, uh, we're seeing new job postings as of course these, uh, new, the stores and restaurants start to reopen. Um, there are a lot of new job applications out there, um, and, uh, and, and people even buying homes. Uh, some of the numbers were actually have more buyers than sellers right now, uh, just because people haven't been listed in the homes, uh, whether just, uh, their personal don't want to, uh, have the homes open for showings during, uh, the shutdown, uh, for their own protection or thinking that the market's not, not healthy 
we're actually seeing a lot of buyers out there and not enough supply coming onto the market. Uh, and the Canadian oil companies, of course, are, are still suffering and still waiting for loans from the Canadian government, which uh, they haven't seen yet uh, as the Canadian government really analyzes how they want to uh, give those out and uh, what stipulations they're going to put on them for the oil sector. Uh, as I mentioned on the currency, uh, the, US, uh, the US dollar uh, actually weakened a little bit um, as things are starting to get a little bit better. Uh, and I'll also talk about the, the Federal Reserve, probably not going to have any clear, um, clear guidance uh, for, the, for the next few months as they figure out exactly how we go through and potentially another stimulus package. Uh, Canadian dollar was up to 74.65. Uh, and of course, uh, it, the US dollar fell a bit against the Euro and the pound this week. On the commodity front, we talked about that deal. Uh, as I mentioned, Iraq, Nigeria, Angola, and Kazakhstan uh, all missed their previous uh, deal numbers uh, for cuts. Uh, although they have uh, agreed to take bigger cuts this, this round uh, to compensate for that, um, it will, we'll have to see whether they, they hold those numbers. Uh, and if we do see any of the countries uh, continuing to uh, produce more than expected, uh, it will put further pressure on the oil, the oil prices. Uh, to mention gold, gold recovered slightly after a bit of a sharp fall. Uh, it was headed towards 1800 ounce. It's now dropped down below uh, 1700 an ounce. Uh, and that's just on the stronger markets that we saw from the, the job numbers. Oops, my apologies. Let me uh, go back to my screen share here. Here, oops. Don't trust me with technology. There we go. So let's talk about the markets. We saw a massive surge in the markets on those job numbers and some of the pent up demand and are we in an overinflated market or is there extra exuberance out there? Well, I, I gathered a couple examples just to uh, kind of show you to uh, really be careful uh, when shopping in markets like these. There are some good deals. There are some fantastic companies that are going to be growing. Uh, but one thing to be really careful is bottom fishing. Are you going to catch that that fantastic fish or that that that, that great catch, or are you going to catch uh, junk? Uh, more often than not, the stats are you will catch junk. If something has fallen uh, high more and stayed down longer than others, is usually a very very good reason. Uh, some people will look at the, these markets and say, "I want to go buy the one that's fallen the less and hasn't recovered yet because it's the one that's going." has the most opportunity to come back up. It's not always the case. We, we definitely get caught behind this value concept. Uh, and even in this recent rally where we've seen, you know, United Airlines uh, rally a bit, we've seen the oil companies, uh, certain ones of them uh, rally a bit. Um, you know, even impressive numbers, you know, a 50% up from the bottom. Now, they fell way further some other companies, but we've always seen we've also seen really good quality companies that didn't drop as much go up just as much uh, to new highs. We talked about eBay, Shopify, and the tech front. Visa and Mastercard that I've talked about are are, are Soren, uh, Microsoft, Apple. Really quality companies with solid earnings that weren't shut down. They didn't go to zero revenues through this. They don't aren't having massive layoffs. In fact, if anything, they're facing hiring challenges. So just be really careful with the bottom fishing. Uh, and, and I've seen a lot of inquiries come in around, you know, this company or that company has been seriously uh, hit. Should we be buying it at these levels? And I've got a couple of examples for you. So here's Hertz car rental, uh, Hertz Global. Uh, car rental, you see their charts, they'd maxed out about $20 a share pre-COVID. Uh, they hit a low of 56 cents. Now, they've rallied recently, and I'm going to give you a close-up. Oh, here, let me give you a close-up. I'll come back to this. A close-up of that rally. So they went from that 20, uh, or in the last five days, they, uh, they went from a 78-cent low, and they rallied all the way up to $5.61. But... What really drove that rally? Let me go back to my previous page here. Hold on. I've lost control. 
before I couldn't stop. Now I can't go back. Uh, previous. Apologize. I had these. I added these this morning, so a bit out of order. Here we go. So they saw that rally, and I'm going to move my little box here. After they declared bankruptcy, they've gone into chapter protection. Chapter 11 protection um, means the stocks are going to be worthless. Now, I have seen this before. We saw it when Air Canada years ago uh, went into bankruptcy protection. Their shares went down to 20 cents a share per share. Uh, there was a buy-in surge all the way back up to $2. Air Canada had to come out and put uh, press releases out and guidance as a firm. We had to uh, put out anyone who tried to put in a purchase order to, to buy Air Canada shares. We had to send them a special notice saying, hey, you know this is worthless. You know, why are you buying this? Uh, so these shares rallied up over $5 uh, from uh, just 80 cents just a week ago uh, on nothing. And then in the meantime, these shares uh, dropped. So, so the, the bonds of these shares, so the bonds who are going to get all the assets, right? Remember, your, your, your lenders take control of the company. They, they renegotiate their debt. They take over any assets that are remaining. Uh, they generally will loan into the company money to take them out of, uh, out of bankruptcy, uh, and they get a new class of share. So the old shares are gone. Uh, in Air Canada's case, using that, continue with that example, one share of Air Canada rolled, 10,000 10, shares of Air Canada rolled into one of the new shares. So, you know, fractions of a penny on value. Uh, and, and that's very, very, very likely, <laughs> exactly likely what's going to happen with Hertz. And we can see that in the bonds trading at 40 cents on the dollar, basically saying there's not even enough equity for the bonds to get their money out of it. They're probably only going to get 40 cents uh, on, uh, on their dollar of equity. Uh, so that doesn't leave anything for uh, uh, sh sh shareholders uh, after the fact. So uh, very concerning that we're seeing rallies in that. It's not alone. Um, Chesapeake Energy, here's another one. Uh, $412 high in 2019, uh, got all the way down to $8.71, and then rallied back uh, massively to, uh, to $69 as we, we see here. And this was the announcement. This is what rallied. They're going to file. They haven't officially filed, but they're basically saying we're filing for bankruptcy. They had to halt the stock. The market halted the stock uh, to protect investors as they were out there bottom fishing, maybe not seeing this news. I actually use these clips, which are right from the internet. So this is none of the special news lines that we get as, as uh, being in industry or, um, you know, it doesn't come out any faster. This is straight from the internet, uh, you know, where, where they've declared bankruptcy or, or about to declare bankruptcy. They've made it public that they're about to declare bankruptcy and the stock surged 181% uh, on the upside. And here's a close up of that where it was trading, you know, energy prices were, were, were way down and then they spiked up again. Um, really absolutely no reason. So there are, is a lot of overvaluation in the market with speculators just betting that things are going to go up. There's, there's not always real reasons for these things to go up. So don't feel you missed out. These are traps. They will suck you in. We've talked about the REITs, the real estate. I've had conversations with several real estate experts, people in the industry over the, uh, the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and more and more we're seeing retail, office space, uh, even residential to some extent um, uh, on, on the rental side, not, not necessarily the purchasing side. Uh, even industrial, uh, which is probably one of the safer areas, uh, not dropping in revenue, but you know, the valuations are peaking out. So uh, we're not seeing that space uh, really improve, and yet we're seeing a lot of buy-in. Uh, and if you think these are just a couple of examples, this was another article I found, kind of made me face palm. Uh, Hertz, White and Petroleum, Pier One, JCPenney, all declared a bankruptcy uh, in the middle of all this and seen their shares rally 70% uh, on Monday's trading alone. So, uh, and then of course, Ch Chesapeake's in there as well. 
be very, very careful of getting caught up in the wave of the market, uh, of the wave of the exuberance and the speculation. It's, uh, it's not all real. 100% there's some great companies out there that are, are surging in value and they're going to continue to maintain that value behind real earnings, real cash flows, real growth. Uh, and those are the ones we want to focus on. So don't get caught up in that, that value speculation trap. I'm uh, probably going to do a deep dive on this one on one of our Friday videos because I've seen more and more of it. But I just wanted to throw that out there uh, to be careful of that uh, and, uh, and take anything you hear about the broader markets uh, with a grain of salt, especially over the next few months, uh, because there is going to be good news, there's going to be bad news. It doesn't mean that your, partic your particular portfolio is uh, being negatively affected. Um, your portfolio should have a strategy that serves you and it should be one target around your risk levels, in which case you uh, would avoid all that. And I just messed that up again. So I'm going to uh, fix that. There we go. So that's it for today. Um, we will, as always, be here next Tuesday with our update. In the meantime, if you have any questions, anything you'd like us to cover specifically, uh, do send them in. We're always happy to hear your comments. Uh, if you'd like to chat, give us a call, send us an email. Uh, we're around working full time and always uh, available for you. Uh, with that, I'll let you go. Uh, enjoy your day. Bundle up, stay warm, have a hot cup of tea or coffee, and we will see you next week. Thanks all. Take care.